friends how are you doing this lovely friday morning uh, i trust that you are well uh, ready for another weekend and so we are going to uh, pursue a theme that we started looking at probably about a month ago you might recall that we spoke uh, on the parable of the mustard seed and i spent a little time talking about hope and I said that we had returned to this important theme in Scripture at a later date. And so I think it's fitting that we now do that. And back at the time, I, I said that that we live by hope. And when hope is gone, endurance and joy and energy and resolve, direction and courage can can vanish as well. And life can just become a grind. And when hope goes, you start to die inwardly. And so I want to focus on a text that is a beautiful passage in Colossians chapter 1. And we are going to be reading from verse 3 through to verse 14. So let's uh, do that. And uh, Paul uh, begins and says, We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. Because we have heard of your faith in Christ and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. That has come to you in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear servant who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the sunny loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. May God bless his word to us this morning. Amen. So Paul begins by saying in our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And so straight away, Paul introduces that great triad that often occurs in the New Testament, faith, love, and hope. And he starts by saying he is grateful for their faith. Here were Gentiles who used to be pagan Greeks, but through the gospel have turned and put their trust in Christ. And Paul hears about people repenting, people are returning from sin, people offering their, their lives to, to serve God. And the gospel is spreading and he's just so filled with gratitude. And he says, we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And along with that, he's filled with gratitude because he says, we've heard of the love you have for all the saints. So he's grateful for the same things that we are grateful for, like community that we have missed for so long uh, being under lockdown. He's grateful for those who were once alienated from God, who now have been welcomed into God's family. And then he says, we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. Paul says, we have heard about your faith. You persevere in faithfulness and you continually love each other. He says their faith and love spring from hope. In other words, hope is the foundation. It's hope that enables you to persevere, to remain faithful and loving. This hope, he says, flows out of the gospel that has come to them. And in the same way, the gospel, he says, is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, 
just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. Remember that Paul is writing this from prison. Caesar is in control. Paul is probably facing death, but he says the hope of the gospel is spreading throughout the whole world. Trying to stop the gospel is like trying to tell a tree not to bear fruit. And then in verses 9 to 14, he tells them how he'll pray for them. And we won't have time to really look at this right now, but it is something that we may do in a, in a future devotion. But let's just read it together slowly. It's such a beautiful prayer. So he says, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. What an incredible prayer. And it's a prayer I really would encourage you to, to pray uh, over others. To, to again, as we even said, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that we can use uh, words from Scripture to pray over others. And so Paul comes back to what their hope is. But their hope, their inheritance, is so sure, he talks about it in the past tense. It's already been won. It's already been done. Look at verse 12. Giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. That's the hope they have to look forward to. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of of sins. Back in ancient days when a, a, a nation conquered another nation, invariably all the citizens of the conquered nation would be transferred to the nation of the conqueror. And that is why we find that the that when the northern kingdom was defeated by Assyria, the citizens were taken to Assyria, and when Judah was defeated, they were taken to Babylon. And of course, they were in captivity for 70 years. And so Paul kind of takes that same idea, and he says that Christ has overcome the powers of sin and death, and we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, to the kingdom of God. And that's where we live, and, and all this springs from the hope that we have in the gospel. And so this is what we want to talk about, is this hope. Uh, my grandmother used to place various special items that she treasured into a little chest. And in those days, it was considered as a step between courting and engagement, where a young working woman would place things like linen and towels and tablecloths and ornaments and some lace and other heirlooms that might have been passed down to her that she had hoped to give to her children one day, a kind of a, an inheritance. It was called a hope chest or a glory box. In some countries, women uh, would put these items in a bottom drawer, which is where we get that expression from, speaking about the precious items that you, you want to store and keep. And now today, you know, you probably don't find too many women who have hope chests around. But the truth is, in our hearts, we, we all have one. We all have a place where we store our deepest treasures, our deepest longings, our fondest desires. We are all eternal hopers. We hold on to hope. And so what we want to really do uh, next week as we look at this whole subject is, is really ask the question, why is hope so important? And more importantly, where are you putting your hope? What box are you putting it into? Is it like a physical box where our hope lies in kind of the things of this world? Or is it in a, 
in an eternal box or a box that is in your heart that, that only Christ can fill. And so we're going to be looking at this in a lot more depth as we look at Colossians 1 and, and looking at a whole lot of aspects around hope. And I, I really pray that at a time like this where so many are despairing, so many have kind of lost hope, that that hope will be rekindled in your, in your life. And so let's turn to the Lord in a moment of prayer. Lord, we do thank you for the hope that you give to us, the hope of the gospel. We thank you that faith and love really uh, flourish on the foundation of hope. And we pray that as we look at the subject over the next number of days, that you will just fill our hearts, rekindle that hope in our hearts, Lord, so that we can, can just fill our hearts with, with the hope that you give and not a worldly hope. And so we just want to give ourselves to you uh, today. We pray your blessing on us as we go into this coming weekend. Uh, whatever lies in store for us as we connect with family and friends, maybe some are going away. We pray that you would just uh, let them travel safely and come back safely. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to to grow us in the in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so bless all those who are either listening or watching this this morning. And may we just continue to derive our, our hope uh, from, from you and all the promises that we, we uh, find in your word. And so bless us as we go into the rest of this day. Uh, we commit ourselves to you and our loved ones in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll catch up with you on Monday as we continue to look at this, this crucial theme. Blessings. Bye.